Hi everyone, I'm Nikita Soni. I'm a fourth year PhD student at University of Florida. And today I'll be talking about a paper on adults and children's mental models for gestural interaction with spherical displays. I did this work along with my colleagues at UF under the guidance of Dr. Catherine Stoffer and Dr. Lisa Anthony. So beyond flat screen displays, spherical displays are widely being used for educational purposes in public spaces such as science museums. But majority of the displays deployed till date either support no interactivity or inst are installed with interaction only via an external touchscreen. Only recently have spherical displays that can support multi-touch gesture interactivity have become commercially available, thus making it possible for us to explore new ways of developing touch-driven applications for this novel form factor. However, we do not yet have a complete understanding of users' preferences and mental models for gestural interaction with spherical touchscreen displays. A lot of prior work on large flat screen displays have looked at children's and adults gesture preferences and mental models for multi-touch tabletop displays and has also resulted in user-defined gesture sets. However, given the often cited influence of legacy bias in touchscreen studies, it was not clear how much prevalence and ubiquity of flat touchscreens might affect users' gestural interaction patterns and mental models for interacting with spherical displays. To understand the influence of the form factor on users' gestural interaction preferences, we compared children's and adults' gestural interaction mental models for spherical displays to mental models for interaction with multi-touch tabletop displays from prior work. And we did that by analyzing a think aloud data set collected during a gestural station study that was previously published in PERDIS 2019 proceedings. So in our previous PERDIS paper, we conducted a gestural station study as a first step, step towards understanding user-defined gestures for interactive spherical displays. So in this approach, users are shown an interface effect, also known as referent, and then users are asked to propose a gesture which they think would cause that effect on the interface. For example, on the slide here, you can see an example of referent bigger, which participants saw during our study. Also, while users propose a gesture, they are also asked to expose their gestural interaction mental models by verbalizing that thought process. So the goal of a previous PERDIS paper study analysis was to compare physical characteristics such as users' hand pose or number of fingers, children or adults used when interacting with spherical displays versus how they interacted with flat screen tabletop displays from in prior work. So based on our analysis, we found that physical characteristics of children's and adults' touch gesture patterns on spherical displays differ from those on flat screen tabletop displays from prior work. Based on our analysis in the PERDIS paper, we speculated that these differences in physical characteristics of touch gesture patterns between the two form factor might stem from the similarity in how users conceptualize the interaction with spherical displays as compared to flat screen tabletop displays. So in this Sky paper, we used the data from our previous gesture elicitation study to understand the underlying mental models that drive users' interaction with spherical displays and understand how do these mental models differ from mental models for flat screen tabletops. So our findings confirm that there are differences in how children and adults conceptualize their interaction with these two form factor, and that the form, physical form factor of the spherical display tended to strongly influence the way users conceptualized interacting with it. So before I go into discussing our findings, I'll give a brief description of our study design and participants. So we conducted a gestural station study with 13 children aged 7 to 11 and 13 adults. After the consent process, all the participants in the study were asked to do a think aloud practice with the experimenter. And this was done basically to elicit high quality think aloud data from both user groups. Before giving the participants the study task, all the participants were asked to interact with a fireworks application which was running in the sphere for five minutes in order to overcome the novelty effect. So during the study, all the participants were shown 17 reference, 
preference are interface actions which are shown to participants by playing video on the sphere. During the study, all participants were asked to propose two 100 and one 200 gesture for each referent. So in our study, referents were divided into two higher level categories. The first category was traditional flat screen referent, which was included based on prior work on flat screen displays. The video on the left shows an example of traditional flat screen referent called Bigger. And there I've also listed other traditional flat screen reference in our reference set. Sphere-specific reference were included based on prior work on sphere-specific interaction. You can see an example of sphere-specific specific referent on the video on right. This is the example of reset sphere rotation. And such reference will only make sense on the spherical form factor. So for this paper, we did analysis of think aloud utterances, which we collected during the gesture station study. In total, we collected 1,238 think aloud utterances from both children and adults. And these utterances were analyzed using inductive thematic analysis approach, which is a bottom-up approach which is, that is used to systematically organize large-scale qualitative, qualitative data into themes based on the natural relationships without trying to fit the data into pre-existing coding schemes. So again, to remind the main aim of our analysis was to understand users' conceptual models of interaction with spherical displays, and then compare to what has been previously found for flat screen tabletop displays. So in today's talk, I'll go over some of the main similarities and differences we saw in users' gestural interaction mental models for the two form factors. So prior work examining gestural interaction for flat screen tabletop displays found that users show a strong dependency on the prior experience with WIMP-based interfaces. WIMP stand for windows, icons, menus, and pointers. So in our study with spherical displays, we also saw users manifesting some legacy bias by conceptualizing interaction based on their prior desktop-based or touchscreen experiences. For example, a user said, like clicking the X button on a computer to delete. In contrast, when conceptualizing interaction with spherical displays, participants' dependency upon these prior wimp based and touchscreen experience was not as strong. So in contrast to flat screen tabletop displays, for spherical displays, we saw users' mental models for interaction with the sphere moving beyond legacy-inspired gestures and that participants tended to use physical form factor of the sphere as a cue to conceptualize the interaction with the display. So in particular, the physical form factor of the display caused users to view it as a real-world spherical object and tended to influence their mental models with respect to what interaction they thought could be possible with it. For example, in this video, you will see a user viewing the interaction with the sphere as if they are interacting with a real-world three-dimensional object, such as a physical body. The first thing I would do would be to do that just because again if it's like a 3d bowl and i want to see the bottom but obviously it can't move i'm just thinking what's going to make it think that i want it to see the bottom so our finding revealed that users tendency to draw upon physical affordances of the form factor tended to be more prevalent for spherical displays than that was seen in prior work on flat screen tabletop displays so based on this finding in our paper, we recommend designers to capitalize upon both physical and perceived affordances of the spherical display to design intuitive and natural interactions for touch-driven spherical displays, in addition to supporting users' dependency upon their prior touch screen experience. Another unique and frequent theme that we saw during an analysis for spherical displays was about, was about the way participants discussed physics principles such as speed, momentum, friction, and force when conceptualizing their interaction with spherical displays. So specifically, this type of behavior of commenting upon commenting about physics principles was more prevalent when participants proposed gestures for commands that involve making an interface element travel a large distance across the sphere or manipulating the whole interface, whole sphere at once. For example, stopping the sphere from rotating. So for example, in this video, the participant will talk about their mental model of how the speed of their gesture should influence the rotation speed of the whole sphere. Yeah, in this case, uh, am 
I'm actually going to swipe slowly against it to decelerate it. So as another example, in this video, participant will talk about how doing a sharper, a quick flick will give momentum to the object while flicking it across the sphere. Without dragging it, just doing a sharper flick, it feels like it might have momentum on its own. So based on our findings demonstrating users' mental models of using principles of physics when interacting with spherical display, a physics engine could be employed to give pseudo functionality to the sphere. So using a physics engine can enable consideration of concepts like friction, speed, momentum, which are more reflective of real world dynamics when designing gesture recognition technology for spherical displays. For example, gesture recognizers for spherical displays could, would benefit from using time and speed-based gesture recognition. So during our study, we also asked participants to propose gestures for two collaborative tasks, example, flicking or sending an object to the other side in order to enable users to collaborate with the other person standing on the opposite side of the sphere. For these collaborative gestures, we observed that in addition to suggesting gestures in XY plane, for example, swiping vertically or horizontally to send an object to the other side, participants often imagined a third dimension that cut through the middle of the sphere when proposing gestures for collaborative tasks. For example, in this video, you will see a participant imagining that the object will tunnel through the sphere. Where it's like, a, maybe like a spiral. Like that. So, and that would, the system would recognize that I'm trying to tunnel it through. We also saw participants imagining interaction with digital controls to accomplish collaborative tasks that require large directional movements across the sphere instead of employing touchscreen gestures. For example, in this video, you will see participant preferring using control-based interaction to send an object across the sphere instead of making large gestural movements. In the image with my two fingers, and then instead of making large movements, I'm imagining this kind of like your cardinal points around the image, so you can select with the other two fingers which way you want it to go. So for collaborative tasks, participants imagined interaction modes that let them send an object across the sphere quickly with more direction control. The two examples which I discussed show a mixture of user preferences for performing directional movements on the sphere. Some users preferred using natural touch-based touch interactions to send an object across the sphere in a particular direction while other users preferred using a digital control such as a cardinal point to help them make precise directional movements on the sphere. Since spherical displays are still novel for general audiences, it is important to design user interfaces that conform to users' mental models or try to shift their mental models by providing more scaffolding. In our paper, we suggest that instead of absolutely removing directional control widgets, designers can gradually move towards natural interactions. For now, interaction designers for spherical displays can employ a hybrid solution of using both control-based and natural gestures for directional movements. So the main takeaways and design recommendations we suggest based on our analysis is that designers should capitalize upon both physical and perceived affordances of spherical displays when designing interactions. We suggest considering using physics engine when designing gesture recognition technology for spherical displays. And lastly, since spherical displays are a novel form factor, we suggest employing a hybrid solution of using both control-based and natural gestures for directional movements. So in conclusion, we analyzed think aloud utterances to understand users' gestural interaction mental models for spherical displays. We found that physical affordances of the spherical form factor strongly influence the way users in conceptualize interaction with this display. And based on this, we provide recommendations for designing spherical displays that are aligned with users' mental models. So with this, I wrap up my talk. If you have any question, feel free to contact us on our email addresses, which are listed on the slide here. And thank you for listening to our talk.